So sit back. Time for a long two-hour sermon. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows that is not true. <laughs> My brother said an hour and 50 minutes, also not true. Don't worry. You got them scared. <laughs> So Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I want to take one more moment to welcome everyone, and especially to welcome those of you who are here to check me out tonight to see, <laughs> is this still a home for you? I want to welcome you tonight into the sanctuary. I want to welcome you online, those of you who are online to check me out, and I want to invite you to come and get to know me. This is one piece of Rabbi Resnick. Another is when we sit and have coffee or lunch or go on a walk or a hike or learn together in a classroom or have a social justice moment or feed the houseless. So take that opportunity. Don't judge me just on one piece. Get to know me. And I want to encourage you to get to know these incredible people that are here in this room and that are here in this community and that are here in that wonderful Zoom room. And I want to invite you to choose to make Kola Me your home once again or for the first time as we move forward. So this week, we read Parshat Korach which includes Korach's challenges to the Aaronite priesthood and Datan and Abiram's mutiny against Moses' leadership. It tells the tale of not one, but two rebellions, which end both in death and destruction. There is battles for ego, vying for power and a number one position. Families are involved and people get smoked in the process. Great one to start on, right? <laughs> As I studied the words of Torah, I could feel the years of Korah's resentment building up. I felt his envy, his hatred. I heard the whisperings from his family and friends. You deserve better. That's really not good enough. You should be the leader. These whispers must have gotten just loud enough that Korach felt he needed to step forward. He needed to rebel, to make a grab for power, and not in the name of justice, but instead out of ego, out of his deep need to be number one. Spoiler alert, this doesn't go so well for Korach. It's not surprising that I too am thinking about my new role and how we build this spiritual community together. Korach reminds us that in order to do the holy work of building community, we must first put our egos aside. We must find humility and learn to work together peacefully. I view Korach's story as a warning a reminder that as we build community kolami, we begin by assuming positive intent. We practice patience and compassion. We learn slowly when to step up and when to step back. Korach's challenge was that he wanted to be number one so badly that he lost sight of the holy work he was called to do in community with other holy individuals, all with unique gifts. Spiritual community can sometimes be challenging because we're in relationship with other human beings. While a rabbi can be amazing, many people know that any community is only as good as its people. So who is Kolami? We are the voice of our people. Kol Ami. We are the West Hollywood Reform Congregation. We are the hands of God. We are the hearts and the souls touched by queer experience. We are straight friends and allies who care about progressive Judaism. 
We are the stories woven into the AIDS quilt. We are the doctors and lawyers and judges and teachers who fight for justice for those who are disempowered and unable to fight for themselves. We are the non-Jewish partners who love Jews and raise Jewish children. We are non-binary teens, baby gays, and those who are still unclear what God intended for them. We are your queer ancestors fighting the fight for decades so that you could live freely and marry who you want. We are straight couples, singles, and families who are looking for somewhere radically inclusive to belong, to stand up, to be counted. We love everyone, even those that Father Greg Boyle reminds us fall outside of the circles of acceptance in society. We are those who choose Judaism as a space of prayer and worship because Judaism welcomes us exactly as we are with our scars, our different cultural backgrounds, our lovers, and our many imperfections. We are the ones who feed the houseless in this community because we saw how great the need was outside the doors of this very sanctuary. We are this and so much more. We are Kolami. Kolami, the Jews wandering in the wilderness with Egypt behind them and the unknown in front of them, we are like them. We too begin again tonight. And it's okay if you're a little afraid. I'll let you in on a secret, me too. <clears throat> Life is filled with moments where we must let go in order to begin again. We leave jobs, we start new careers, partners leave, we find love again, people we love die, and we learn to live without them in our everyday moments. If we are lucky, life is long, and we let go and begin again and again and again. So Kola me, I invite you to join me, join us on this journey. Walk with us as we begin again. Dream our new future into being. Learn with us. Pray with us on Friday nights and Shabbat mornings and holidays. And roll up your sleeves. Let me repeat that. Roll up your <laughs> sleeves. Call on me and help us do the hard work, building a new call on me. Tonight, we step forward, Kadima, into an unknown land, a new country, a new Judaism, a new call on me. And yes, I want to acknowledge the elephant in the room. The path is unknown, my friends. The leader is not so familiar, except for those four in the first row. <laughs> but the people alongside you are your family. They've been with you for decades or lifetimes, or maybe it just feels like it. Tonight, Kola Me, I invite you to take this leap with me, with all of us. Kadima, our future awaits. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.